Hey guys, it's Christina and Josh. I'm Christina, he's Josh. <laughs> How you doing? Give me this, I gotta, I gotta get on this because he's too tall. You guys know who this is? This is Josh Koch. <laughs> How far do you hit it? Pretty far, pretty far. He hits it pretty far. Kyle Berkshire, slot number two. Josh Koch, look at these guys, hugging and kissing. We're in the finals at the One Stop Power Shop, PLDA. This one's gonna stay in play. He likes it, but it's leaking. This one's gonna be one where you just hope it stays in so he has a number. This one's landing right about now, landing, and it just stopped, so he probably flew that about 350. Let's talk mobility. Okay. Let's talk rotation. Okay. The golf swing is rotational. Wouldn't you agree? Very much so, very much so. You use this with your students. What do you do with this? I do. Yeah. So, you know, as you just alluded to, golf swing is predominantly a base around being able to rotate the body. So, especially for more of the novice golfer or the older demographic of golfer, I'll use something like this to help them get better awareness of how to actually turn their body. Ultimately, what makes myself very good, and I say this humbly, at what I do, is I've had years and years to master how to move my body. So. At the same time, you have to start somewhere, right? And I remember being a kid and, and trying to figure out how to move, move my body through different uh, ranges of motion. And eventually, the more you do it and the more you use different tools to help you get that awareness, it becomes second nature. And that's where we're starting with this. So it's second nature for him. So let's get it more second nature for us, all right? right. Let's do it. Right. Set up a little station here. Yep. So Josh, lead the way here. All right. So. We're gonna get into station. Now we wanna start by actually kind of bear hugging it. So wrap our arms completely around the ball. From there, we're gonna roll the ball down to our belly button. Now we're gonna get into our posture. Now, from where we're set up, we can't actually see the sticks on the ground. And what I want you to do is I want you to feel like you turn your body back so that the, the left, the stick in the middle starts to become visible. So you get that ball around far enough, you'll actually see that stick intersecting through your left shoulder. And that's how we kind of know that you're utilizing your core and you're utilizing your obliques to turn your trunk back in the backswing. Talk about, uh, that's awesome. Talk about shoulder angle. Good question. So, uh, and what she's alluding to is, I'll hand, hand this to you. It's kind of the steepness at which, or the rate, the shoulders are, are tilting in the backswing. So, as we're turning back in the backswing, there's a level of left tilt and extension that's happening. Um, a lot of times you see different demographics of players doing different things, but ideally, as we're turning back, we wanna incrementally start to see those shoulders get a little bit steeper, okay? And the way I like to kind of teach this concept is by having someone put their arms out like an airplane, okay? Now, all right, you be the model and put your arms out like an airplane. Now go ahead and bend over in your golf posture. Good, so we don't want the airplane going too quickly down. We don't want the airplane going too around. We want kind of the in-between, so we want it kind of moving at an angle. Now you can see the extension of her arms is representative of the tilt of her shoulders now. So at the top from the down the line view, you can see there's a little bit of tilt. You can see that she's actually created a little bit of left bend through her, the left side of her obliques. Um, and now that's that she's really in a good position to initiate her, her downswing from there. All right, so here we have Josh hitting a driver, and we can see at the top of his swing, his lead shoulder, well, his shoulder line is pointing down. He's rotating his torso, and he's got an angle here. We call this side bend, which is allowing him to get this lead shoulder down. All right, where players go off is they're missing the side bend, and they end up having a shoulder line that's too level. All right, so this is a really important point that even though his hands are going high, he's lifting this lead heel to really get that elevation so he has more force coming down. He's still maintaining the shoulder angle down created by, in part, by this side bend, all right, as he's rotating his torso this way. So that's an important point to understand. 
Just go ahead and play it out so you can see his awesomeness. Look at that. Now that's a bomb. If a player gets, uh, we could kind of talk about the opposite side of the spectrum. So go ahead and set up again. If the player gets too tilty in the backswing, they'll end up too far forward and then they'll typically have to stand up out of it. And if a player does the opposite and they turn back too flat, they'll end up too far right in the backswing. So there will, th that player is gonna typically have some low point issues. So that's why when we set up, we kind of want a little bit of in between. Perfect. And you can see the night exactly. So I like to say lead shoulder down and around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. This is up and away. Yeah, and I think I think everyone's cue, um, and and this is the thing in my opinion about golf tips is, is there's so much great information out there right now. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of making sure that a particular tip or feeling applies to what you actually need to be working on in your swing. And that's where by having a great coach like Christina to be, able to, <laughs> to be able to go and send your swing to or have it analyzed or attend some of your camps, it really allows you to hone in on what the player specifically needs to be working on so that they're not wasting their time. That's right, Josh just made a great point. So a lot of players watch these tips and they're great tips, but they may not apply to you. All right, so you may be actually go down the wrong road because you're misdiagnosing. I think that's the biggest thing right. is misdiagnosing. Right, I would right. agree. So we're going to talk a lot about that in this series with Josh. Psyched that he's here. <laughs> we're at the beautiful Reunion Resort shooting these tips for you. All right, so let's. Uh, so that's a great warm up with the ball. Yeah. Let me uh, give that a whirl. Yeah, and like I said, this is, I would say, more of like a, um, a novice level drill. You know, someone who's trying to gain awareness of their trunk. You could even put this into a, a walking pattern. So I'll borrow this for a second. So in terms of warm up, right? Yeah. You could actually do something like hugging a ball and then as you walk, okay, roll the ball around your body. Okay, you could kind of see what that does is that really helps kind of get that trunk moving. There's a lot of rotary elements to that. I know you mentioned the obliques. Um, you, you really can sense how that body's turning and how that body's winding up. So go ahead and try that. So set up with your feet straight, right? Wrap your arms around it, good. Now take a step with your right foot forward and then rotate your trunk to your right, good. And then step to your left, good. And keep it walking, feel that. I feel like Dustin Johnson. <laughs> Yep, like and now go backwards. Exactly. So we're doing this, we're actually rotating with respect to our gait. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Allowing the hip to release. Right. Actually, this is a good thing to do down the hall before you head out to a round. That's what I mean. And eventually the player can, can ex, um, remove the ball and then do it more with their arms. So, you know, like I said, that's just generally to get awareness of your trunk. Yep. As the player gets more advanced, they could go more into a walking pattern like this to where they're allowing the arms to propel the trunk into rotation. So go ahead and... What, what is that noise that I'm That hearing? noise is uh, the victory in souls. So um, that's something we, I remember last year when you were here and we met, that was, that was when I added them in there. They do squeak a little bit, but they are supposed to actually improve ground reaction force. Oh yeah? What, what are they called? Victory insoles. V-K-T-R-Y insoles. Check them out. They're a little yeah. noisy. You, gonna, you need earplugs? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. But uh, You can feel the ground better? You can, yeah. I noticed that when I started using them, my club at speed went up, so okay. I was I was hooked. Cool. So. I'll have to check them out. Yeah. I'm going to be OB left, so Kyle's going to be down to his final ball here. Josh Koch, six ball. Here in the finals, the one-stop power shop, PLDA, event 104. Ooh, big ball down the left side. Right, Kyle Berkshire down to his last ball. We'll be left. Josh Koch is going to win. He's going to be the first to win All right. in the PLDA. Congratulations, Josh. So, 386. There we Kyle go. No